So let's have a look at uh, the wild testing tools. And the first one is the log log plot and also called derivative plot. So here I've got my gauge pressure with three PBUs here. So for this particular PBU, for example, I can plot this pressure signal, which is pressure T minus pressure jet in, like this. And this is called the delta P plot. So I plot this versus the shutin duration delta T. Okay, so I take my pressure signal, pressure T minus pressure shutin versus the elapsed time of the shutin duration. And this is a log log scale. That's going to be easier to identify the different flow behaviors and the flow regimes. You can take as well the derivative of this delta P. And this is the plot in red. So this is the derivative of delta P or the PBU pressure with respect to a time function. I'm not going to enter too much into details uh, for this presentation, but we're going to spend a bit more time on this plot. And I've got three main statements for you. So the first main statement is a stabilization on your derivative plot could be indicative of radial flow regime. What is radial flow regime? This is a circular flow towards the wall, and that is in the horizontal plane. The level of this stabilization is going to be inversely proportional to your mobility, kh over mu. k being the permeability in the horizontal plane, h your net reservoir thickness, and mu the fluid viscosity. Okay, let me repeat this first statement. A stabilization on your derivative plot could be indicative of radial flow regime, and the level of this stabilization is inversely proportional to kh over mu. So if I have a lower stabilization, I will have a higher cage. If I have a higher stabilization, I've got a lower cage. Second main statement. The vertical separation between your stabilization and the delta P plot, so if you like between the two plots, is indicative of the skin or the damage in the wall. A higher separation will mean higher skin, lower separation, lower skin. The third statement is that your shutting duration, or delta T, could be replaced, if you like, by delta R, the radius from the wall. So as delta T increases, you increase the distance from the wall. Small delta T, you are looking near the wall bore. And what you might expect to see in most cases is a long unit slope straight line and a hump on the derivative. This long unit slope straight line, if you look at the log log scale, so I've got one log cycle or one log cycle, this represents wall bore storage. So for example, when you start production, production at your face is gonna be due to the expansion of the fluids in the wall bore. It's not gonna be due to the, your reservoir contribution. You will have a time delay before the surface production becomes the same as the rate production. Inversely, when you shut the wall in, your rate at surface is going to be zero, but your rate in the reservoir is going to be gradually decreasing towards zero, and you're going to have a time delay as well. Okay, so as delta T increase, you're looking further away in the reservoir, and you will expect radial flow regime with a stabilization, so circular flow towards the well, and at large delta T, you're looking even further away from the well, and what you might expect is boundaries. And a boundary will be represented by an increase in your derivative at late time. Okay, so just a quick recap, three main statements, a stabilization on your derivative could be indicative of radial flow regime in the horizontal plane. The level of destabilization is inversely proportional to kh, permeability times net thickness. The vertical separation between the two plot is indicative of the skin, and delta t could be replaced by the radius from the wall. Small delta t, you are looking near the wall bore. Large delta t, you are looking further away from the wall. Right, so we spot the radial flow regime in the derivative plot. This is the most important flow regime in well test analysis. It's going to give you the permeability and it's going to give you the skin. In general, the derivative plot is going to show you a combination of flow behaviors. What I try to do in this slide is to separate the derivative into three times. The early times, near the wall bore region, 
to middle times away from the well and late times further away from the well. So near the well bore region, in most cases, what you'll see is well bore storage and skin. So a long unit slope straight line and a hump in the derivative. If the well is fracked, you might expect a fractal behavior. And this is a sort of behavior you might expect early time on your derivative. Some sort of parallel lines for delta p and the derivative. And in general, you won't see this one unit slope straight line. What you might expect to see is half unit slope straight line or quarter unit slope straight line. So that will represent linear flow regime and bilinear flow regime. Middle times, you'll see radial flow regime, hopefully, one stabilization in the derivative. But in some cases, and we're going to see this a bit later, you might expect more than one stabilization. Late time, you'll probably see some boundaries. And you've got two types of features. Either an increase in the derivative and then a stabilization. And depending on the level of this stabilization, that's going to be a fault or intersecting boundaries. Or you might see only an increase in the derivative following a half unit slope straight line that represents linear flow regime and that would be indicative of a channel. I was saying that sometimes you may see more than one stabilization and that may be due to a reservoir feature. So this is a simple case, vertical well, a circular flow towards the well, that's radial flow regime. So you've got a stabilization in your derivative and again, the stabilization level is inversely proportional to KH. But let's assume that further away from the well, you've got a reduction in net thickness. Okay, like in this example. So you are further away from the well, large delta T, and now your KH is getting reduced. So if, if your KH is getting reduced, this number is getting higher, and you might expect a higher stabilization. So like this. So early time, and in this case, about one hour on the log scale, you will have radio flow regime near the well bore in the horizontal plane. Further away from the well, so with the low scale, we've got 10 hours, 20, 30, 40, etc. Maybe about 80 hours. Now you've got the second stabilization, and that's due to reduction in net thickness. So higher stabilization as well. 